Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today I am so excited to bring you a brand new sneak preview video of RIS version 0.6. There's going to be multiple previews in this video, guys. So check them out down in the chapters below. We're going to have the map. We're going to have the Greek city-states roster. We're going to talk about AOR. We're going to talk about the 29 new, smaller, unplayable Greek city-states that dot the map now as well. And the AOR system that they might be putting in place for these nations. Now, this is so exciting, guys. And I can't wait to share it with you. What I am going to say, though, guys, is that this video is going to be focused on those unique units for the smaller unplayable factions. I will be releasing a part two of this video where we'll talk about the history of each of these nations and why they've been added into the game as well as their starting location on the map and potentially later on we'll do a video on how you can access these unplayable nations by changing a few things around in the files. Just remember, guys, that although these 29 factions remain unplayable for the foreseeable future, they will be made playable very easily with some little trickery in the files. Uh, and they just didn't want to clutter up the main area of the faction selector with all these tiny little factions. So that's why they are generally unplayable. But it's very, very easy to make them playable. But first, let's look at that glorious map first of all i'm going to show you the vanilla map and genuinely when i loaded this up with some of the mod team the other day when we were talking about this video i chuckled because i've been playing on ris for so long that this genuinely made me chuckle looking at the vanilla map once again and how little um provinces there are on the map but have a look at it for a second and we're going to switch now across to the current map for version 0.5. Have a good look at that. Breathe that in. Because that gap between vanilla and RAS version 0.5, I think is replicated if we go to our cheeky little sneak preview of version 0.6. Of course, on there, you might be able to pick out some of those new 29 smaller Greek city-states. And I'm going to tell you their general location, but it's going to have to be up to you to try and work out which of those little dots is our brand new city-state nations. It's so exciting, isn't it? Look at the comparison between the two. If I stick that up on the screen right now, you can see the difference between the two maps. And it is crazy the amount of more settlements they've added in. From a map that was already the largest total war map in existence. I'm pretty sure someone commented on my first video on the 0.5 map that even Warhammer 3 has a smaller map than that. And they've gone even bigger, even bolder, guys. And I bet you're just getting you so hyped uh, for the release of this mod. And I cannot wait. One thing to note, guys, of course, is it's all a work in progress, so the map might change, but obviously it's going to have the same volume as what you see there. And we're also going to be showing you a lot of these units from the Greek city-states and from some of the smaller nations, and they are currently toying with the AOR system and looking into the AOR system. So don't take it for granted that it might be a generic AOR system. They might have different versions of that, maybe mercenaries, maybe AOR buildings, that sort of thing that are going to bring it together currently that are undecided so of course i can't say they're all aor uh, units but they are a very exciting nonetheless and they're very much looking into making these units recruitable for other helenes around the map so let's start with the greek city states roster this is a generic roster of most of the greeks and these are units that pretty much every single greek nation can take so, of course, we've got the Akontistai, which we've seen many, many times before. I'm not really going to go over the stats of these units, guys, because I've been over them so many times. But I'm just going to give you a little preview of them. Of course, Missile Attack, 9. Uh, total Defense of 12. Your standard Javi unit. We've also got the Greek Slingers over here. The boys that run away when they hear the enemy cavalry approach. They have a Morale of 3, Missile Attack of 4, and a Total Defense of 7. A good Rissar range of 140, of course. And these guys, there they are, ready to fight. 
with the sun gl blazing down upon them. Very much like it was for me today. I've been out in the sun all day. The notoriously hot English sunshine was unnotoriously blaring down at 30 degrees today. <laughs> and I am ginger, guys, in case you don't know. So it was pretty much like kryptonite for me. Um, <laughs> but what can get you more hyped and up for making this video than looking at brand new 0.6 units? And uh, yeah, I'm so excited. Of course, we've got the Greek archers, four morale, six missile attack, nine defense, 25 missiles to fire, and a missile range of 130. We've seen these guys again many, 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 many times before. Mixed in with them, we've got the Greek Hoplites, which again, we've seen many times before. Looking very nice. I love the large Aspis shields that they have. These big, round shields. And the variation, again, guys, is fantastic. We've seen these guys a lot of times. And you can just see sort of the mix of colors with the Greek city-states. Because, of course, it is the Greek city-states. So they're going to look, you know, a good mix of different... Uh, of different nations and people and that sort of thing so we also have the theroperoi of course the boys with the javelins they're basically the hoplites with the javelins 14 morale for these boys though 34 defense 12 melee attack and 14 missile attack for those javis so really it's up to you whether you go for the better defense or you go for the better sort of uh, attacking although they have 13 melee attack for the hoplites of course those javis on the theroperoi are just more of a shock impact and give you a bit of extra shock but over here let's have a look at the generic cavalry that all the greek nations tend to get we have the greek general's bodyguard over here which is the standard general's bodyguard and we have the zistophoroi as well very nice the heavy cavalry the standard heavy cavalry from the early Greek age. Very nice. The big lances for the boys. No shields, of course. We'll talk about that very, very soon. Uh, but these guys love a lance, and they love stabbing it into the enemy. Quite a nice cavalry unit, honestly, the Zista 4. I found them very versatile when I've been playing uh, myself. With that 34 charge, they really are quite strong. Um, and, you know, when you get your later on cavalry, these guys still do a decent job. Uh, the one thing that you might say they're not great at is probably sort of, uh, you know, fighting outside of the charge. But even then, they're quite good. You know, 12 melee attack is nothing to sniff at at all. Of course, we've got the Prodromoi as well. Um, which, yeah, the standard Javelin Cavalry. And one of the nations which I'll mention now, guys, Trapezus, Trapezus uh, only has these options as their cavalry. Only Prodromoi. They love the Prodromoi over there. Absolutely love them. So those boys are there. And we also have the Theroperoi cavalry, which are normally post-reform cavalry for a lot of the nations, but some maybe not so. Uh, 13 morale, 10 melee attack, 17 total defense with a missile attack of 9. Looking very nice indeed. You're, you're just an updated version of the Prodromoi. And I'm going to say the next nation, Emporion, only has Prodromoi and Theroperoi cavalry as their cavalry. They don't get Zistophoroi uh, or anything like that. Or uh, some of the cavalry that we're going to mention later on. Now, let's move on to something quite exciting. And we're going to be talking about the history of two units that you've probably never considered before. Something that you've never really thought about or talked about too much, is the Uzonoi and the Peltasts. Notoriously my favorite units in the game, of course. Um, but yeah, the Uzonoi and the Peltasts. <laughs> that was ironic, guys, if, in, case you, uh, in case you didn't know. But there is an actual really interesting history behind the use of these two units. And you may notice that some of the nations get the Peltast, the Greek Peltast, the standard Greek Peltast. And some of them get the Uzonoi, and they don't tend to merge. So, let's talk about the history of these, and why we might get the Greek Peltas in certain areas, and why we might get the Uzonoi in others. So first of all, let's talk about the Greek Peltas, because it gives a bit of background into the Uzonoi. 
These Greek peltas are used for a lot of nations um, in the Greek peninsula, in the Peloponnese, that sort of thing. Except the nations I mentioned for the Uzonoi. So remember the nations for the Uzonoi for these 29 new smaller unplayable Greek city-states. Uh, and everyone that's not them will be using the Greek peltas. So the role of Peltas was increasingly overtaken by Thurius armed skirmishers in the Hellenistic period. However, they endured among the polis of central and southern Greece, as well as among many traditionalist Greek polis in Asia Minor and the littoral of the Black Sea. So basically, among the Greeks, they only saw the need to use the Greek Peltas as a unit because they were fighting each other, and this was the prevalent view uh, for many of the Greek nations. They didn't really have incursions from other cultures, so they didn't really see anything new when it came to that. So, of course, they used the Peltas, something that they knew how to use, and some and a way of fighting that they knew much about. And let's have a look at them. Of course, we've seen these guys again many times before we got 12 morale, 10 melee attack, and 23 defense with a missile attack of 9. Lots of defense skill, very little armor, and a bit of a shield as well. We've actually seen these guys do quite well in battles in melee because that 12 morale, 10 melee attack for a Java unit is nothing to sniff at. And 23 defense is fine, especially that defense skill. So these guys would actually do fantastically well against an armor-piercing unit, believe it or not, because I have no armor. And that defense skill is really good. So these guys can actually hold their own in melee. Of course, they're not going to beat an Epilectoi or a Thoracitai or a Phalanx unit. But they're going to be able to hold their own for a little bit at least. And maybe, you know, hold the enemy until you can charge them in the back with your strong cavalry. But now let's talk about the Uzonoi and why we see a slightly different design. And you can see they have the Thurios shield there. That oval shaped shield. Very nice indeed and i'm going to have another historical note so thanks to a howl for these fantastic historical notes these guys are used for these smaller factions i'll just uh, list them out we have emporion acragas taras issa thessalian league histria and sinope and the reason for that is as follows in the third century bc another change happened and a new term appeared the Uzonoi. In Sparta, these were a new force of professional skirmishers introduced by Cleomenes III, who reigned from 235 to 222 BC. I believe the Cleomenes for the Cleomenes reforms, but I could be wrong about that, to replace the untrained Helot skirmishers. Little is known about their equipment, but the most likely interpretation is that the traditional Pelte shield was replaced by the larger Oblong Thurios that became increasingly popular during the 3rd century BC. In regions closer to the areas of the Balkan Celts and the Northern Illyrians, who had used this type of shield long before the Hellenas, Uzonoi-style troops likely replaced the classical... Uh, classical peltas these greek peltas that we've shown just before thus they will not only have been found in sparta but also in epirus and in the macedonian armies finally in the west too with the cultural proximity to both celtic and italic cultures the oval thurios shield was in widespread use among the greek city of the greeks so basically it's the greek nations in the west and those close to barbarians they had Uzonoi instead of the peltas because of the influence of this shield from the barbarian nations and from the nations that they were fighting and they saw that it was probably maybe a little bit better than the other shield but let's have a look 13 morale, 8 melee attack, 9 missile attack, and 21 defense with 6 shield. Very big shield, you can see the shield. So a lot of defense against missiles compared to the Greek Peltas. 8 defense versus 5, but of course a lot less defense skill. And a little bit more morale, but a little bit less melee attack. So a different type of Peltas that you've got there. And that's why I really love that history. So thank you to the mod team for that. And why... There is this divide between Greek Peltas and the Uzonoi. Something that I'm sure you didn't really wonder about, but now it's made you think, hasn't it? Now it has made you think. So let's now talk about the Greek Thorakitai, the boys. 
So we've seen the Thoracitae quite a few times in our playthroughs. And of course we know they're a really good high level infantry unit. Mainly because of the sword, which is a better melee weapon than the spear. And their decent armor defense skill. Uh, and they're also got the javis to throw into the enemy before fighting. But when we look at the Greek city-states, the smaller unplayable nations that we're mentioning in this, we only see Histria, Olbia, and Heraclea, Pontica, having these units. And that is for very specific historical reasons. So we'll talk about that now. A few distant nations employed Thoracitae due to the influences of their neighbor. The Heracliotes had Thoracitae influenced by the Celtic Galatians to their south. Also in the northwestern Black Sea, Histria and Olbia also used Thoracitae due to the multicultural influences of Thracian, Celtic and Scythian warriors. So pretty much in brief guys, Greek nations who kind of intermingled with Dacians and Scythians as well as Heraclea Pontica and the Celts needed to have sort of heavier infantry. To withstand the incursions of other cultural groups. They couldn't just use the Hoplites and the Theroporoi. They needed heavier infantry to deal with the heavy infantry from incursions from the other cultures. So let's talk about their stats. 35 defense is really nice. 20 defense skills. 7 shield and 8 armor. Very good defense against missiles as well. With 16 morale. 12 melee attack. And 15 missile attack with 2 javis. So they're a very strong unit, especially earlier game. So if you're coming up against some of those smaller nations that I've mentioned that have them, you're going to have a bit of a strong uh, struggle fighting them if they've got a lot of these Greek Thoracitae. And again, just look at these units. Don't they look superb and fantastic and glorious? All my favorite words all in one. Very nice indeed. Absolutely glorious but now we've got one final unit to talk about the history of and there's actually three units here called the aspidophoroi three of them a whole three of them and i'm going to explain to you why once again now so apart from emporian and trapezus most of the other smaller Greek city-states have the Espidophoroi, and most of the Greek and Hellenic rosters that we've shown you so far have these guys. But did you know there's three different variants in the game of these units? I'm going to explain to you why in a second, but I'll just show you the different variants. So we have the variant over here, which is an Umbo uh, in the center of the shield, which is this round sort of shield boss in the middle and they were used to sort of bash the enemy deflect blows against uh, against the shield and also fix the shield grip to which you can see behind over here that detail again being absolutely fantastic uh, and of course with that they had a lance and a sword so no javis with these boys just a umboed shield a lance and a sword i'm not sure umboed is a <laughs> Is a word to use. I think that's a butchering <laughs> of some Greek word into English. But uh, it works nonetheless. An umbo shield. A shield with an umbo, a lance, and a sword. And in terms of these guys, we see nations such as Akragas, Issa, Elis, Messene, uh, Argos, Megalopolis, and Kaidonia have these, uh, have these warriors. So the second variant that we have of the Espidophoroi guys, guys, <laughs> guys, is the uh, Spina shield with a lance and javelins. You can see these guys have a missile attack. That's because they have javelins, of course. And they also have this shield with the, the Spina attached down the middle. This little spine in the middle of the shield. That again is there to deflect blows, catch blows. And also to add more structure to the shield and attach the shield grip. But unlike the Umbo guys, these guys have javelins as well. Now in terms of the nations that have these guys, in terms of the small and playable nations, we've got Byzantium, Chios, Melitus, uh, Prain, Chios, Sinope, Heraclea, Pontica. So those are the nations that have these boys. And then last but not least, the third 
variant we have. We have the mixed shield variant where they have an Umbo and Spina shield design, but also have the Lance and javelins as well. And in terms of the nations that have these, we've got Taras, the Akarnanian League, and the Thessalians as well. Very cool indeed that these three uh, these three variants exist. And I'll just explain to you why these elements and these different variants exist while I let you take in the beauty of these glorious RIS units. Greek cavalry did not carry shields before the 3rd century BC. The experiences of fighting the Thurius armed Galatians and the shielded horsemen of Italy, however, led to a fundamental change in Greek cavalry warfare, and by the end of the century, both Thurios and Aspis bearing cavalry was be were becoming more and more common. Two different versions of the Aspidophori Aspis bearers existed. The Achaean, Aetolian, and Boeotian leagues, as well as Athens and Syracuse, deployed horsemen armed with a round shield, slightly smaller than that of Italic cavalry, but with a big umbo in the center. They were protected by Boeotian helmets and, Lilo and Linothoraces, and equipped with long cavalry spears and copious swords. This effective melee cavalry unit replaced most of the Zistophore lancers who had dominated the battlefields of Greece and Asia Minor for a hundred years. A second type of Aspidophore appears mostly in Asia Minor and was in use most likely by Pontus, although uh, quite late, Rhodes and Epirus, armed with a large round shield with a center thicker spina. They carried javelins along with the spears and could pepper their foes from afar before charging. The Antigonids of Macedon and the Attalids of Pergamon, meanwhile, seem to have used both kinds of shields and equipment for their cavalry, making them extremely versatile. So, of course, these guys, you know, the three different variants, they have a historic reason. And in case you wondered, I'm sure you didn't even realize that there were three different variants of these boys. But, of course, there are, and that's the reason. And that just goes to show the amount of historic depth that this mod team is going to, to bring these units to you guys. They're not just putting in units just for the sake of it. They're not creating a Spido Foray variants just for the sake of it. They are creating them because there's historical data, archeological data, and historic accounts of these different units being used across the Greek world, which I just find mwah, mwah, absolutely fucking glorious. First sweary of the episode. Fantastic. My favorite words are swear words. So that is also glorious. That it, it is so glorious that it has caused me to swear. But anyway, guys, I hope you found that really interesting. But stay tuned, guys, because the second half of this video, we're going to be going through all of the unique banners and unique units of these new Greek city-states that are going to populate the map and make the map feel so alive in the Greek region. Here we are, guys, with the first few units we're going to be showing off. Just note that this is more of a unit video. I'm not going to be talking about the stats too much because, of course, there's a lot of hoplites in here, that sort of thing. I'll just go over the stats very quickly, but I'll tell you what nation that these guys are going to be, tra uh, going to be trained for, what unique Greek city-state that they will be used by. And, of course, like I said before... That they are, they are very much looking into AOR systems, how that the player can then recruit these. So there's a very good chance you'll be able to have these guys on your battlefields very, very soon. And control them. Of course, you'll be fighting these guys. So, you know, you will see them on the battlefield at some point. So, first of all, we have the Mediterranean Greek sort of uh, unique nations, the Greek city-states in the Mediterranean. We start with Emporion. Emporion is a Greek sort of trading colony around Catalonia in Spain, and they get the Emporionite Hoplites, which looks so cool. Red. Red is the color of these boys. They love a bit of red. Trying to compete with the Romans. Very nice indeed. I mean, I love that uh, image once again. Very cool indeed. Looking fantastic in the red. And uh, these guys... As we can see, have some pretty nice stats. 15 morale, 13 melee attack, total defense of 38. So actually, a bit better defense than most normal hoplites with two extra defense. 
So let's now talk about the Sicels, the natives of Sicily. So what we're talking about here is Acragas, which I'll put up in the corner, above which is on the southern coast of Sicily, of eastern Sicily. And Syracuse, of course, gets these boys as well, which you've probably already seen in my Syracuse video. So we have the Sicel Peltaforoi over here, a Javi unit. With morale of 12, 8 melee attack, 9 missile attack, and total defense of 20. So very similar to the Greek Peltasts, but just a little less melee attack. And of course, you can see that these guys are the poor javelin men of the, <laughs> of the army that you're very much likely going to use as a meat shield, aren't you? Against some filthy Roman cavalry or something like that. We've also got the Sicel uh, Theroperoi over here. Very nice. Indeed, and they've got quite a uh, sort of light blue and sort of white uh, color scheme going on here. The cream and the gray as well. Very cool indeed. Would get very dirty very quickly on their escapades around Sicily. But a nice looking unit nonetheless. Very cool. Uh, 15 morale, 12 melee attack, 14 missile attack and 35 defense. So that's actually better than most Theropera as well, with 15 morale, rather than the standard 13 or 14 that you tend to get. And probably one more defense as well. So quite a nice Theropera unit there in general. Now let's look at Taras, which is an emergent faction in southern Italy. And its history, if you don't know, guys, is very interesting. So you'll have to stay tuned for the uh, history of those guys in the part two of this video that we're going to do. And we have the Tarantine Cavalry, which I'm sure you've seen in some of my other unit roster uh, replays. These guys are really cool. They are a Javelin Cavalry unit with a 10 missile attack, which is pretty, pretty obscene. 15 morale as well, 24 defense and 29 charge. And they look great. They look more like a melee cavalry unit with the amount of armor that they're wearing. I like these guys with the, the sort of Macedonian sun on there as well. Very cool indeed. Looking fantastic. I mean, that is a plume and a half. Look at that plumage. That is some serious plumage going on. Very nice plumage. I like your plumage, sir. Very cool. Very cool. But a really nice unit nonetheless. We've seen them before, haven't we? But 15 morale and 24 defense for a Javi missile cavy unit is fantastic. They are a really, really good javelin cavalry unit. Along with them, they do have the Deuteroi, which we've seen before as well for Epirus, if you remember quite far back when we did the Epirus roster. And these guys actually look glorious, honestly. I love the white on the shields. It just really pops, especially from afar. Really, really pops with the white and gold. Looking, oh! Looking very drippy. Looking very, very, very drippy. Look at that. Fantastic looking unit. Really nice, indeed. But I'll just tell you the history slightly of these guys. They're the same, same pike unit uh, as Epirus. Uh, and basically, they're there to represent the Tarantine Lucas Spides that Pyrrhus raised in his famous war with Rome. So that is why Taras gets these boys. Very nice. Very nice unit. In terms of their morale, 15 morale, 34 defense, and 17 melee attack. So they're probably more of a mid-tier Phalangite unit. Most Phalangite units have 18 or 19 sort of attack. Around the same defense and morale, though. So... A solid mid-tier phalangite unit, nonetheless. And, in, and of course, you're going to be the coolest phalangite uh, on the map with your cool, drippy white and gold shields as well. So let's move on to sort of the central Greece around the Thessalian plain and all the regions around there. So pretty much we're excluding the Peloponnese from these units. We'll get onto the Peloponnese later, uh, but we're going to have a look at central Greece. Greece. So we have Athamania, which is right in central Greece. And the first thing, so it's not actually a faction. This is just a rebel settlement. So of course, it's going to be AOR or mercenary based. We have the Athamanian Peltasts. And these guys have 14 morale, 25 defense and 11, miss, uh, 11 melee and missile attack. 
So these guys are actually a really decent Peltas unit for melee. Even better than the Greek Peltas. And they look glorious as well, of course. All the units in this mod always look glorious. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> I don't need to say it, do I? Just how good these goddamn units look. They look so good. So ridiculously good. This is on a 20-year-old engine, guys. <laughs> look how good they look. Better than Total War Dung Beetle anyway. A lot better. And that's being released. That's not even been released. <laughs> so they look so, so good. Fantastic. But a really solid Peltast unit with the 25 defense coming in hard, man. Although they've only got 9 defense against missiles. 16 defense skill. Again, quite a good amount. 14 morale is really good. 11 melee uh, attack and 11 missile attack. You know, so they're pretty much in line with the Greek Peltas, but a bit of variation in the stats there. Very cool, indeed. So next, we have a, an actual faction, the Akarnanian League, which is sort of in a central west Greece. It lies on the Ionian Sea, just west of Aetolia. And these guys, look at those boys. <laughs> they look so good again. Oh, I just can't get over how excited I am. I'm genuinely excited. I hope you can hear that in my voice. But we have the Akarnanian Hoplites. And just look how mean these motherfuckers look. I love them. Yes. Yes. Glorious. We've got plumage and capage. And this is a Hoplite unit that is worthy of plumage and capage because they got 40 defense guys 15 morale and 13 melee attack so just quite a bit better than your standard hoplite unit that has 13 morale 13 melee attack and defense of around 36 38 so just a bit better than the standard hoplite unit and they have the look to match don't they these guys are the swaggiest hoplites on the continent very cool indeed with the bronze best breastplates looking really nice. Again, let's just have a look. Tiny little details that go into making these units look so good. Just look at that detail on the uh, the uh, cheat guard there. Very cool indeed. Again, like I say every video, you're going to mostly be playing the battle from about here. They don't need to add that in. It's just there for extra detail, for extra look for extra variety, just to make this mod truly great, which it is, of course. So, let's move on to the Akarnanian Slingers. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe should have done them first, before the Drippy Boys. But these guys actually do have a nice little shield. Total defense of 12. They've actually got 5 morale, morale rather than 3. They've actually got 5 melee attack rather than, I think it's 4... And a missile attack of 5 compared to the 4 of normal Greek Slingers. So they're just a bit of better version of Slingers. So, let's move on to the Thessalians, which are in the Thessalian Plain, of course. Sort of north of Boeotia and northeast of Aetolia. And these guys, of course, get the cavalry. Get the cavalry, boys. The Thessalian cavalry, which generally used to be called the Thessalian Lancers. Um... Which you've seen me use in my Sparta campaign, and I probably will use in my Seleucid campaign as well. And these guys just look fantastic with their new armor and their new look. We haven't got plumage, but we do have capage. I think, honestly, these guys deserve a bit of plumage, because I've got to say, these guys are pretty fucking elite for just a standard Lancer Cavalry, a very heavy Lancer Cavalry to be fair. 17 morale, 14 melee attack, with a defense of 30, 12 armor, which you can see adorning their bodies. Look at that detail once again. Defense skill of 18 and a charge of 44. That is rivaling some cataphract units, guys. Rivaling them. That's crazy. These guys are so strong. If you can get these guys in your army with the AOR mechanics or whatever you whatever you can get, however you can get them, get them in. They are so strong. That 44 charge is going to shred flimsy hoplites, flimsy theroperoi units to absolute pieces. It's going to be fantastic. It'll be glorious to see these guys charge. And don't they look glorious as well? So on to the second Thessalian 
unit, which is the Perhybian Cavalry, yes. The Perhybian Cavalry, which are a missile cavalry unit. 10 missile attack, 11 melee attack, 14 morale, and 17 defense. And they've got the red robes going on here. Very nice. Cool. Lots of red. They, they liked dressing in red. Probably covered up the blood. Um, but yeah. <laughs> and they've got these tiny little shields. These little square shields. Which are really cool. I don't believe we've actually seen them. In the game so far. So a very unique looking unit. All in red. And with the tiny little square shield. Almost looks like. <laughs> looks like some sort of holy order from like Dark Souls or something. Here come the Perhybians. In their red robes and their little square shields. But yeah. They've got decent stats as well. A plenty good enough missile cavalry unit. If you like missile cavalry. But what kind of sets them apart. Is this 33 charge. That's kind of obscene for these guys. Because <laughs> they're not that good a unit if you look at the rest of the stats. They're, they're plenty fine mid-tier unit. But the 33 charge is quite good. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. For a missile cav unit. So you can use the missiles on these boys. And then get some lovely charges off. Just remember not to leave them in melee too long. Because they're not that strong in melee itself, of course, without the charge. So let's move on to the Peloponnese. Uh, where we see plenty of factions, as you would, of course, expect. So let's first of all talk about Ellis, which is in the western Peloponnese, wedged against the sea by Achaea, I believe. So we have the Elian Hoplites over here. Again, pretty standard Hoplite unit, 15 morale, 13 melee attack, 38 defense. So maybe just a little bit more defense and morale than most Hoplite units. And again, we've got some lovely plumage going on with these boys. Very nice indeed. And we've got the bronze breastplates mixed in as well. Really cool. Along with, of course, the alien uh, colors. Sort of the color scheme. So you, you'll see lots of color variation between sort of these units. Um, and that's because they're in the colors of the nations that uh, will have them. So they're liking the blues and the reds in here. Quite a lot of blues, isn't there? Very nice indeed. Blue and red. Seems to be the colors of Ellis. Very cool, indeed. And next to them, we have the Elian Ephibes. Now, normally when we see the Ephibes, they're kind of a spear-bow hybrid, an elite bow unit. But these guys are more sort of like the Boeotian Neoniskoi, which is, if you don't remember to the Boeotian, um, the Boeotian um, roster uh, go over, those guys are basically like your basic spear unit even worse than hoplites these guys are you know those guys are pretty pretty standard basic and i was looking up the ephibes and stuff and it's pretty much young lads <laughs> wanting to make a name for themselves in these units um so yeah it's young it's young men trying to make a name for themselves making up these units and they're not heavily armored they're not that strong but what they make up for uh, what they lack in armor and strength they make up for in sort of enthusiasm. <laughs> That's the idea anyway. But, you know, if an elephant comes at them, what are they going to do? Probably run. <laughs> I like they should. Like I would as well. <laughs> but 13 missile attack for a couple of javis that they have. 11 melee attack, 13 morale, and 29 defense. So pretty much just a worse version of the Theroperoid. But obviously in-game, they'll be a bit cheaper. Uh, nice, like, nice cow hats they've got on. The Scrooge hats. Very cool. Indeed, very drippy, of course, wearing raw cowhide on your head. Um, <laughs> but yeah, a pretty low tier unit and probably a good unit to garrison a lot of your cities with. So let's now talk about uh, Megalopolis, which is actually an emergent faction. South Central Peloponnese. If you've watched my Sparta campaign, you'll watch us take Megalopolis. So here is the Megalopolopolopolopolon. The Megalopolitan Chalcospedes, which is a, um, obviously a Phalangite unit. 16 morale, 18 melee attack, 36 defense, with an alt attack of 9. Pretty standard Chalcospedes unit. I think that's pretty standard for the stats. Maybe actually a little bit more morale, now that I'm thinking about it. And they've got these lovely bronze shields, which really do reflect the sunlight coming down upon them. Very cool. Indeed. A really nice unit indeed, I've got to say. But yeah, standard mid-tier phalangite unit. And that's what 
Megalopalopalopalop gets. So on to the next one, which is Argos. That's Argos Price. If anyone's from Britain, you'll know Argos. <laughs> it's a shop in Britain. I don't know whether it's anywhere else, to be honest, but I, I assume so. Uh, but we have the Argive Epilecto. Ep Epilecto? Epilectoi. Uh, which, uh, you know, Argos is in the northeast Peloponnese. And they become a special unit for the Achaeans once they've conquered Argos. So, if you are the Achaeans, try and conquer these boys. Because, again, very drippy. Very cool helms. Very large helms. Make them look like they have alien brains. Look how big my brain is, bro. <laughs> yeah, I had to get this specially made because my head's so big, bro. Yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, they do look really, really cool, don't they? This guy's just contemplating, why? What is life? What is life right now? Um, what is life is, is us admiring your armor, sir, okay? Us admiring your very nice breastplate. Um, but yeah, these guys, 40 defense, 15 morale, 13 melee attack. So just a better version of the Hoplites once again. And again, they do look absolutely glorious. In fact, if you notice, it seems to me that these guys actually have slightly smaller shield than a lot of other, hopl ho other hoplites. Um, just slightly smaller, so another little unit variation in there as well. They do actually look really good, these guys, don't they? I like the purple. The purple is a big color with these boys. The purple and the yellow capes, and it works really cool, really well. So... On to the last of the Peloponnese, and we have just the generic sort of Peloponnese hoplites, which, it, you know, are AOR and mercenary, depending on how they implement it. And yeah, you can see these shields are quite a lot bigger than the shields over here. A lot smaller, those shields. Uh, and these are just your generic sort of Peloponnesian hoplites, which 20 morale, when I say generic, I meant amazing. <laughs> 20 morale, 15 melee attack, 46 defense, boys. These are hoplites that have been on the steroids, honestly. <laughs> These are the rock hoplites. These are absolute monsters. 46 defense is crazy. 31 defense skill with 8 shield and 7 armor, 20 morale, and 15 melee attack. Very nice unit. Very strong. Of course, I must mention that of that, you know, some of these stats might change. But I'm assuming that these guys are going to stay very strong still out in the game. So if you take parts of the Peloponnese, you should be able to get these guys in version 0.6. Either with AOR or with the uh, sort of mercenary system as well. Cool. Fantastic. So now we'll move on to the Cretans, the Black Sea and Anatolia. I will see you there, guys. So we'll move on to Crete, guys. And first of all, we have the Cretan units. All the Cretan factions get these. And of course, there'll be AOR or mercenaries uh, that you can get on Crete as well. They don't have the Greek archers or slingers because, of course, they have the famous Cretan archers, which are a famous unit from Crete and were famous all across Greece um, from Greece to Italy. Seven morale, 22 defense. 9 melee attack and 9 missile attack with long-range missiles. Now, then, it might not be quite as good as Neo Cretan archers, but these guys, these are like early game units. These guys are really, really darn good. And we can see that they look glorious. We've got a bit of Medusa on here. And those stats for early game are just going to wipe the floor with standard Greek archers. So the Cretans are going to have very, very nice archer units on hand to pepper your armies with if you want to invade, which is really cool indeed and obviously very historically accurate. And they look glorious once again. We've also got the Cretan Slingers. Uh, very nice indeed. 5.56, five, so quite a bit better than the standard Greek Slingers. And a defense of 12 with armor-piercing primary weapon, which refers to their missile, I believe, all the time. Primary weapon refers to the missile. Uh, for these guys because they are a missile unit. So these guys are armor piercing. So you've got to weigh up whether you want them or you want these and who you're fighting. Uh, you know, whether they are heavily armored or 
not. With 160 long range uh, missile range and 28 ammo as well. So, again, two fantastic missile options for the Cretans that you might get your hands on if you go and invade Crete. And you'll definitely fight. So, fantastic. Really glorious indeed. And then, of course, we've got the Cretan Hoplites over here and these guys are really good again so a lot of these hoplite units are really nice just to make sure that the um the city state has a good enough roster to sort of compete and uh, do a bit more than just stay still or get munched up by the bigger empires we actually have a goat man over here mr goat um and a bee so very cool uh, sort of cretan designs on here uh, is that safe for a YouTube, that design. I don't know, but I really want to find out. <laughs> um, kind of safe. It comes under, it comes under art, so... <laughs> Not quite safe, but nearly safe. It'll be fine. 13 morale, 13 melee attack, so the standard hoplite morale and attack. But 37 defense, so just a little bit better than the normal hoplites. And quite a lot of defense skill, so just a bit stronger than the standard hoplites and some really cool new uh, shield designs that we've not seen before. And of course, their own uh, color scheme as well. So let's move on to Gortin. Gortin, they have a lot of units assigned to them. And Gortin is sort of south central Greece. So on the south coast of, uh, south central, sorry, south central Crete on the south coast. And they have mega bum bags. If you thought that the uh, if you thought that the slingers carrying their uh, their special items in their bum bags was cool, look at these bum bags. They've got golden bum bags ready to go. If you're American fanny packs, <laughs> but yeah, mega bum bags, golden bum bags. Who doesn't want a golden bum bag? But anyway, <laughs> that is quite cool. I do really like that feature, which we've not really seen before as well. So, cool. And a lot of plumage going on. A lot of uh, capage. So, this is, of course, for Gortin. 13, 13, 37. So, very similar to the Cretan Hoplites. In, in fact, exactly the same. So, very nice indeed. Cool unit. Looking very cool with their swanky bum bags as well. So, we have the Gortinian Theroporoi. 14, 12, and 31. Again, looking really cool. Uh, Theroporoi unit. Different amounts of armor on each guy as well. This guy's just like, I don't care. I don't need armor. I'm hard enough, bro. I I'm hard as fuck. I don't care. All you pussyos wearing armor. I do not need it. Probably gets killed by the first arrow that comes. <laughs> this guy will just have like a second to say, I told you so. As he walks over his bleeding body. Oh, but oh, well, well, suddenly that got quite dark. Um, but anyway... 14, 12, 31. So pretty standard for a Theroporoi unit. Maybe just a little bit worse in terms of the defense. Uh, but standard for the morale and the melee attack. And of course, again, got their own look and feel. So now we have the Gortinian Hippias. Uh, 15 morale, 12 melee attack. And they are fast moving, which uh, they are heavy cavalry, so not quite as fast as a light cavalry. But fast moving for a heavy cavalry means that they're decently fast. They're not just slugs slugging around the battlefield. 26 defense as well, which is really nice. Uh, and they also have seven javis that they can fire into the enemy with a charge of 28 and really decent hybrid stats. So these guys are kind of like the Aspido Foroi. Very cool indeed. Going to do a lot of damage. And they've got some nice, nice uniforms on. Kind of similar to the, uh, uh, the Machimoy uh, cavalry that we saw with um, the Egyptians, the native Egyptians. Really cool indeed. And I love the shields once again. But in terms of the stats, these guys are a really, really solid cavalry unit. In fact, going into elite cavalry unit. And they have javelins to fire into the enemy as well. So a really good unit for uh, Gortin to have uh, as part of its roster. And then next to them, we have the Gortinian Hippies. Happy, happy, happy. 16 morale, 14 melee attack, but they don't have the javelins. 26 defense, but 42 charge. 
These guys are absolutely beastly. And once again, we see some use of this scaled Linothorax, which I do really, really like the look of, that we sort of saw uh, with Egypt and some of the other rosters and maybe some of the Thracians as well. Uh, sorry, Bosporans as well. Really cool sort of uh, uh, detail there. I really do like that scaled look. It looks really, really good. Um, but yeah, really elite heavy cavalry unit with a 42 charge, the 26 defense, 16 morale, and 14 melee attack. These guys are going to be shredding. Uh, once they get the reforms. They do have an Espidophora unit, but I'm just going to show you one of the other Espidophora units for these nations, and it's, it's a very similar one, uh, so I didn't want to show it twice, pretty much. But we also got uh, on to the next faction, which is Nosos, which is Central North Crete, so pretty much the, just the opposite side of the island to Gortin, uh, and very similar in terms of their unit makeup as well. These guys got the white accents. They've got their eyes on their uh, helms there, looking at the enemy, staring the enemy down with those eyes as well. <laughs> looks like a makeup tutorial, bro, on your helm. Uh, but no, it looks really cool. It looks really cool. Um, but yeah, I'm assuming that's to scare the enemy. Um, but yeah, looking fantastic. Again, the bum bags and just the di little details on the bum bags as well. Really, really nice to see. Loads of little different designs. Again, very cool unit with the uh, the bronze and iron breastplates and the linothorax as well. But pretty standard hoplites again, 13, 13, 37. So standard to what we've seen uh, all the way through. And along with that, we've got the Nosian Hippies again, which is what we saw before. 15, 12, 10. Are they same as the other ones? Yes, they are. So, of course, these Cretan units get the uh, sort of same stats for these boys. But again, I stand by what I said. Very, very good hybrid unit, especially early game. So, watch out for this unit if you're fighting some of these smaller Cretan nations. And again, they have the Nosian Hippies late uh, reform unit, which is really, really cool. And a fantastic unit again. Again, the same stats, but slightly different variations and uh, different um, color schemes. In fact, that belt, you've got these little uh, sort of, you know, scabbard belts on, and they're really, look at the design on that. I didn't even know that level of detail was even, you know, the, the, so the texture on that, I didn't even know that level of detail was possible uh, for this engine, but that is cool as fook. And then we've got the Nosian Espidophore, which pretty similar to the Gortinian, uh, Gortinian one, but kind of a really, really colourful shields here. I do really like that. I like the Minotaur one, of course. Very cool indeed. Very nice. Uh, and these guys are what we, uh, you know, saw before. The Espidophoroi. Different types of Espidophoroi. These guys are the ones with the javelins. 10 missile attack, 11 melee attack, 15 morale, 23 defense, and 36 charge, which is really nice. So these guys are going to be a very, very nice unit. Again, these guys are going to be post-reform, like the uh, Nosian Hippias late. So, uh, yeah, these guys are kind of your replacement for your early Hippias that are, uh, you know, javelin units. You don't get them after that with the late ones because they don't have javelins. But then you get the Espidophoroi instead. Very cool. And then we move on to the Lytian Hetairoi. So the companion cavalry of the of Litos, which is a faction in the east of Crete, the far east of the island, and these guys get companion cavalry, the uh, Hetairoi, which 16, 13, uh, 16 morale, 13 melee attack, 15 missile attack with two little javies to throw into the enemy, 23 defense, and a charge of 30. So Crete has some really good missile units and also some really good cavalry. And have we seen this plumage before? I don't think we've seen that style very much. The mohawk uh, sort of a punk rocker style. Very cool indeed. And again, of course, these guys look fantastic. Everyone looks fantastic. <laughs> An angry boar with a mohawk as well. What a legend. That is my favorite shield so far. I love the angry boar with a mohawk. Fantastic. Great. 
Angry Mohawk Boar. Yes. Yes. Great. Really looking cool, these guys. Of course, the shield's fantastic. The design, glorious. Uh, breastplates on and everything. And plenty of plumage to go at. So we'll be back with you in a second with all the rest of the units from the Black Sea and Anatolia. So I'll see you there, guys. So now we come on to our final few Greek city states. And we start with Pontic Pen. Tapolis, which is sort of north of Thrace on the east coast of uh, sort of Bulgaria and Romania today, sort of the uh, the western edge of the Black Sea area with a few different cities. Uh, and these guys, uh, of course, have a couple of nice little units. We've got the Tomian Epilectoi, which are post reform, which are looking gloriously nice. Look at those boys, that is some flamboyant plumage going on. And from the front, they look glorious as well, with very nicely colourful shields. This guy's just looking... Sort of the height that he's at is slightly creepy, but apart from that, very, very cool indeed. Really, really nice unit. 18 morale, 14 melee attack, and 16... Oh, that's the, that's the wrong thing. That's the Thracian Cavalry. I thought that was a bit weird then. 15 morale, 12 melee attack, with a couple of javies of 14 missile attack, and a total defense of 35. So quite a nice spearman unit, sort of a mid-tier spearman unit, although they're post-reform. You know, I think these guys probably still around mid-tier, even though the plumage is so glorious. And then we've got the mercenary, well, not mercenary, the Thracian noble cavalry for these boys. And we've seen them in the Thracian rosters. And they are just fantastic. Really nice unit. 30 defense, which for a cavalry unit that's non-cataphract is absolutely glorious. 34 charge as well. 18 morale and 14 melee attack with a couple of javis to throw into the enemy with 16 uh, missile attack as well, which is really strong. And of course, they have the very nice capes. I really do like the Thracian designs on them with the Spina shield, Spina Thurios shield there as well with the Thracian designs on it as well. We've seen these guys before, but they are a really glorious unit nonetheless. So now we're on to Chersonesos, which is on the southwestern sort of Crimean coast, and they get their own Hoplite unit as well. Very cool indeed. Really large shields and a very good design. Very well designed shield there. I'm assuming that's Hercules, but I could be wrong there, but I'm assuming so anyway. Uh, but yeah, really cool. Shields, really cool designs again. And remember, just the uniqueness. How many different designs of shields have we seen today, guys? And these guys have the scale armor as well. 38 defense, 15 morale, and 13 melee attack. So just a bit better than your standard Hoplite unit. Now let's move on to the Prieni. Prieni? Prieni? Prieni, which is on the Aegean Sea by Ephesus in Anatolia. Um, I believe this is a standard faction at the start of the game. And these guys get some Epilectoi as well, which are a really strong unit. Again, with their own color scheme, their own shield designs, more, more unique shields than you could ever want in this mod. Look at them. Fantastic. Really nice. Lots of plumage and caping with their own color scheme. Once again, 41 defense, 16 morale, and 13 melee attack. So this is a bit more of an elite Epilectoi Spearman unit. Very cool indeed. And next to them, we have the Prienian, Prienian Hippotrophoi, which are a javelin cavalry unit, a heavy cavalry, very much similar to the Zistophora in terms of its stats. 15 morale, 12 melee attack, and 23 defense with a charge of 34 so pretty much uh, a unique sort of zistophoroi unit over here and again looking glorious ready to charge boys yes i don't know why suddenly they became part of like a napoleonic battle but oh <laughs> oh well so 
on to the next few units. And I've actually grouped these up maybe a little bit too much. Uh, but we've got the my uh, we've got Militos, which is on the western sort of coast of Anatolia, sort of central. Similar-ish to, you know, Prieni, but I think they're a bit further north, but I could be wrong on that. But they get the Milesian Horophilarches, the guys with the sweatbands, because they're going to be doing a lot of heavy lifting for your armies. 12 morale, 9 melee attack, 9 missile attack, and 25 defense. So quite a good, decent javelin unit there. 19 defense skills, nothing to sniff at, as usual. So a bit of a stronger, more elite uh, javelin unit. Now on to the Milesian Neocretan Archers, which are actually a reform unit. So Neocretan Archers, 7 morale, 9 melee attack, 9 missile attack, long range missiles, and total defense of 22. I think that's, that's worse, right, than the standard Cretan Archers. I think it's pretty similar, honestly. Um... So, yeah, the, the Cretans get standard Cretan archers early game, whereas you have to wait to... Well, these guys have to wait for reform. That's just how good the Cretan archers are. But, again, really nice uh, uh, archer unit that's going to do well late game and, again, looking glorious with their little shields. And then next to them, we have the Milesian Hoplites. 38 defense, 15 morale, 13 melee attack. Very cool indeed, with some, again, some glorious designs. If I'm not mistaken, that is Alexander uh, for them on there. And that, of course, is Princess Fiona when she's angry at Shrek. Um, but yeah, really cool looking uh, unit there. Lots of capage, lots of plumage. Uh, and yeah, quite a nice unit. Just a little bit better than the standard Hoplites once again, which we see as a theme throughout these boys, don't we? So then on to Kaizikus. Kaizikus. Which is uh, on the northwestern coast of Anatolia, around the Sea of Marmara, if you know modern uh, sort of naming systems for these places. Around the Sea of Marmara on the Anatolian side. And these guys get three units as well. They get the Kaizikan uh, Hoplites. Very cool. Just, uh, again, same stats, 15, 13, 38. But they get their own unique look and feel as well. Some new unique shields. I particularly like this crazy lion. I think it's a lion. <laughs> crazy animal. <laughs> Having a good time. Uh, really cool indeed. Again, no plumage because, of course, they're not elite. But they do get a bit of capage. A little bit, a half capage. Uh, and then we have the Kaizikan Epibati, the Marines, which 15-12 with two Javis to throw with 15 missile attack and 29 defense. They are classed as heavy infantry. They've got 20 defense skill currently and no shield, but I'm sure that's going to change sometime soon because clearly they are using a shield. So, of course, remember, everything's work in progress, guys. Uh, but, yeah, I do love an Epibati unit because generally they do really well in the battles uh so again very nice looking shield some unique designs once again and very cool indeed and then we have the kaizikan aspidophoroi 15 morale 12 melee attack 10 missile attack and 25 defense with a 28 charge so a little bit weaker than some of the aspidophoroi units we've seen so far i think but looking really really nice i love the shine of the, uh, the gold around the edges of the shield. The edging of the shield there. Very nice indeed. Cool. And some of them, as we can see, this is the Umbo and Spina style. The mixed shield style with the javelins. If you remember to earlier on in the video. That style of Espidophoroi that we talked about then. So glorious to see that out in the wild. Uh, like we've talked about it already. Cool. Really nice, indeed. So, on to Kios. Not to be confused with Kaisikus, like we just talked about. We have the Kian Archers. 7 morale, 8 melee attack, 9 missile attack with 160 missile range and total defense of 18. And again, the standard sort of Neocretan look uh, on these guys. With the large domes on the heads of these boys. <laughs> With, again, some unique shield designs. 
Very cool indeed. So pretty much just a slightly worse version of the Cretan archers. But again, better, a lot better than the Greek archers. So these guys are still an advantage compared to the sort of the standard Greek archers that they're going to face around them. And these guys, like I said, uh, these guys are also on the northwest coast of Anatolia in the Sea of Marmara. Unless I've already said that. Maybe I have. And then we have Heraclea Pontica, which is sort of north-central Anatolia on the Black Sea. Um, Similar-ish position to uh, one faction we'll mention later as well. So on northern Anatolian coast in the Black Sea. And these guys, again, some unique shield designs there. Um, we got uh, the Hydra being killed. Very cool indeed. And they have the standard Heracleote Hoplites, which again, standard uh, standard uh, stats 38, 15, and 13, um, which we see throughout a lot of this roster. Uh, and then we have the Heracleote Epibartis, so some more Marines, and I do really like their, uh, um, their, their roster card, because uh, their unit card, because it does really stand out. 7 morale, 11 melee attack, 9 missile attack, but with 24 missiles. So these guys are a bow and spearman unit rather than a javelin and spearman unit. With 28 defense, 16 defense skill, 5 armor and 7 shield. So although their morale's not very good, these guys have a really, really good defense for a predominantly archer-based unit. Really cool. And they wear their shields on the back we've not seen that for quite some time in the rosters have we the shield on the back and that does provide a fantastic view when you come back here see the shields on the back shouldn't take much missile damage to the back but you know normally they're firing at someone in front of them who will be firing back so might not be quite as useful as the shield on the arm but it looks fucking great nonetheless, doesn't it? It looks really cool. I do like the look of these boys. And really quite interesting stats there as well. 11 melee attacks quite good. You're just going to have to avoid uh, morale shocks with these boys. Because they, they're classed as spearmen. But any morale shocks, they're going to run with the 7 uh, morale. But that 11 melee attack and 28 defenses is quite good for a uh, archer unit. So quite interesting stats there as well. And then along with them... They have the Heracleote Horophilakes, uh, which are another javelin, uh, javelin boy, with 26 defense, 12 morale, 9 melee attack, 9 missile attack. It's kind of like a Greek uh, Peltas, but with more defense because of that 19 defense skill, 7 defense against missiles, which isn't too bad. Uh, so yeah, quite a good defensive unit once again. Not going to do a lot of damage in melee, but it's going to be able to defend quite a lot. Really cool. I do like the different stats on all these boys. Really, really nice. And then penultimately, penultimately, guys, um, we have Sinope, the Sinopian archers. So Sinope is, again, central northern Anatolia on the Black Sea. So that's really cool. Um, and if you played EU4, it's, uh, it's a little place there on northern Anatolia that uh, you get to take over very quickly as the Ottomans, but it's a really annoying place to siege. So hopefully for you guys playing a Rome Total War and RIS, it won't be quite as annoying to siege. It'll be a bit easier for you. But a lot of birds in their imagery over here. A lot of animals, mainly birds, as we can see. So the uh, the eagles, really cool, which I'm guessing is their uh, their banner, which I will, I will have put up in the corner there. So these guys, seven, eight, nine. Um, 24 uh, ammo with 160 missile range and 19 defense, seven of which is armor. So some good defense against missiles once again. And a decent archer unit from right early in the game. So now we move on to Selge, which is on sort of central southern Anatolia. And they have the Selgian Slingers, which are crouching down right now. There we are. 555. Uh, but yeah, 32 ammo with 140 missile range and 9 defense. So just a bit better than your standard Greek slingers there. But anyway, guys, that brings us an, an end 
to this video on all the AOR units. So if you have enjoyed, guys, a like would be really appreciated. I can't tell you the amount of work that's gone into this video from both the mod team and from me myself as well. I mean, my recording's sitting way over an two hours right now to, to edit this down to a, a, you know, a video for you guys, which I'm assuming is probably going to be 40, 50 minutes anyway. Uh, so yeah, and that's without all the planning all the work that the mod team have done to get this video out to you, including, you know, planning, messing with the rosters so that the rosters will work for me, all that sort of thing so that I can show you guys these brand new rosters. And don't forget, we saw a new sneak, sneak preview of the map. So this video is worth a like just for that anyway, right? So thank you very much for watching, guys. Like and subscribe, all that good stuff. It really does help the channel out. And I will see you all again on the next video.